Welcome back channel supporters and yes, I've been away, including taking time to produce an Odyssey exclusive last week. If you would like to support me over there, you can click on the link in the video description below. And with that, let's dive right into today's video. There are a lot of things I want to talk about, the first of which is my thoughts over stock assignment on put options trading. Second, I'd like to give an update of my biotech portfolio because things have changed. And finally, as promised, I'll describe what is the multiplex base editing that Beam Therapeutics offers and explain why is it so game-changing. So without further delay, let's scratch that intro. I've been teaching biology since 2004. On this channel, I hope to simplify and explain the science behind the companies that's driving the genomics revolution one video at a time. So far, I've been pretty happy with how my put option strategy has turned out in generating passive income over the past couple of months. Here's a look at my numbers. In August, I added $2,091.24 and in September, another $1,920. All in since May of 2021, that's $11,067.99. Not bad, I would say, without putting in much time or effort into it. Although recently I've been thinking to purposely get stock assigned just so that I can make a video about it. To increase the chances of a stock assignment, I can choose a strike price at the money. In the past, I chose an out of money strike price with a delta of negative 0.3. The advantage of at the money strike price, of course, is higher premiums. However, this comes with higher risk of stock assignment. Should I do it? Let me know in the comment section below. For those of you who are interested in my options trading journey to generate passive income, I have collected all the videos where I cover this topic and have listed them in the video description. For my beam therapeutic positions, I've opened them back in 2020 and have yet to change my position size to date. I'm pretty happy with the paper gains, although I'm not thinking about liquidating anytime soon. Will it 10x? In the case of Illumina, I opened a small position earlier this year, and recently due to the negative publicity about the Grail merger, it dropped in prices, and so I went in and added another small position. I picked these companies because of the strength of the underlying scientific fundamentals and that has not changed, meaning I'll only look for opportunities to buy more. And if my positions change, you will be the first to know on this channel, so stay tuned for it. In the past, I've described at length Beam Therapeutics base editing. So today, I'll focus on multiplex editing instead. Let's start off with the big picture. Genetic diseases can be divided into three broad categories of one gene, one disease, many genes, one disease, and cytogenetic diseases due to numerical or structural aberrations. For one gene, one disease, the classic example is sickle cell anemia, and I've talked about this at length using Beam 101 and 102 in the past. Links are in the video description below. For cytogenetic diseases, the most commonly known is Down syndrome, which is a result of numerical chromosomal aberrations. There is no viable scientific solutions to date for Down syndrome, so I will not discuss this area any further. Instead, I will focus on the many genes, one disease phenomenon of which cancer is a prototypical example. Contrary to popular misunderstanding, cancer does not involve one gene mutation in order to develop. It can involve accumulations of anywhere between three to seven mutations on cancer-related genes. And since mutation occurs randomly and by chance, not all cells within the lump of tumor will have the exact same mutations, creating a phenomenon known as tumor heterogeneity. This means that traditional forms of gene therapy are prone to failure because they are more or less modifications of single gene targeting. This will likely fail because there are multiple genes involved and not all cells have the same gene mutations. Let me explain. Say there is a gene mutation of a tumor suppressor gene, the most famous is P53, 
occurring in a subpopulation of tumor cells. The others within the ball of cells have a RAS mutation, which is a famous proto-oncogene, instead. So if you only target p53, perhaps those cells with a p53 gene mutation will die off as a result. But this does not affect the remaining cells with a RAS mutation who have normal p53 genes. They in turn will become the majority now instead, and along the way acquire even more mutations. Now, Q Beam Therapeutics and its multiplex editing, and which is what gets me so excited. This is because, as I've mentioned in the past, the company has a platform that can generate a whole variety of targets that can be used to rain on the ball of tumor cells. This will drastically increase the cure rate, and note, I said cure, not treatment. And I'm not done yet. This is how I think the process leading to cancer cure will come about. Rail, an Illumina company, can be used to pick up pre-cancer signatures using their AI. This happens way before cancer develops. Since in the early stages, the pre-cancer cells may only have one to two mutations. This can be confirmed by Illumina's short read sequencing or 10x genomics gene expression profiling, which in turn uses the Illumina's technology. The data obtained can pinpoint which cells and which cancer mutated genes are involved. Additionally, if there are any expression abnormalities, then Beam Therapeutics with their factory production of multiplex base editors cocktail will be called in for targeted potential cure of these cancers. That is the reason why I'm highly interested in both companies because they are so synergistic. Not only that, they have the ability to disrupt all the traditional pharma treatment options. One way to treat cancer traditionally is the use of chemotherapy. These are poisons that can kill all cells, and we hope that some of these cells are cancer cells. They suck! Have you ever seen patients treated with chemotherapy? Ayo! And with that, we have come to the last part of today's video. Beam's approach to multiplex base editing is quite unique and I'll have to dissect it down for everyone to understand using Beam's 201, which interestingly has been advanced into the IND phase. Stay tuned for a follow-up to today's video. Finally, I've brought up a poll in the community tab to check if you have understood today's content. In the past, it was freaking easy and today I've made it a bit more tricky. Show me all you channel supporters that you can rise up to the challenge because all of you are wicked clever and I'm Benjamin Young. Catch you in the next one.